You know, I thoroughly enjoy being able to take the time to record personal devotionals with Jesus and with you to share with God my heart in sometimes talking to you but sometimes expressing it to him as he sits here with me and lives inside me but as he also participates in fellowshipping with me by leaving a empty chair here for him to sit and to speak his mind to me and sometimes operate within my voice so to speak to you and me both hearing that things he might say that would be through the word that by his holy spirit makes it fit in your life but sometimes i like to express just me you know the the person of me that is walking with god but talking to jesus at the same time that i'm sharing it with you knowing that he's hearing me because that's what an attitude of prayer is like and i like expressing to you as Jesus knows my heart more than you do the reality of what it feels like sometimes from a man walking with God that's at times misunderstood by people when you work in the ministry or you share things you know like in writing or expressing things that God has laid upon your heart how there are times where irregardless of how much you might try to bring about the word to a person they may read into it something they need to hear as opposed to something you may be saying so don't be surprised if at times the holy spirit causes misunderstanding to apply to you because there'll be people that really don't get what you're saying and i think i like the reason behind this devotional called evotional in sharing and caring about people is that I get a chance to express my feelings too in an emotional way that I can demonstrate who I am by what I'm saying and how it applies to me because it's not contrived there's no script here there's no format except to keep it short you know within 10 minutes more or less but that it hurts the man of God. It hurts anyone who is in the ministry when at times, not only are you misunderstood, but people run with their own feelings on something that they may be bitter about, or they may be angry about, or they may express and vent on you about. I know in my days when I worked in jobs that directly involved the public with customer service, I was an expert at bringing out that hostility a person may have had to vent it on me and then to diffuse it often to other places without the person knowing exactly what I was doing so that way their anger would slowly dissipate and then they could come to some type of resolution and absolve themselves from that initial emotional response but you know when you're sharing about Jesus when you're talking about God when you're explaining the scriptures there's another part of you that just grieves and it just, oh, it's like sitting with the Lord over Jerusalem and going, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you only knew, if you only understood where I'm coming from, if you only knew the hour of your visitation, that this is God speaking and that God could use this moment if you would just recognize me. And sometimes I grieve with the Lord like that and I... I see what people say sometimes when I write to them on the internet and they react in the completely wrong way. And I think, wow, how could you come to that conclusion? And sometimes able to resolve it, but a lot of times just can't. And so then you have to take the brunt of the emotion that the person has vented from the words and let it become at you to live possibly on the surface of you until you could give it back to the Lord as an offering of suffering that you've done in his name not because you went out and attacked somebody although sometimes they may feel like it but because you shared your heart that you desired for them to know something and you shared it in a way that's still blessed but they completely missed the boat in understanding your intention which 
in sometimes in viewing you can see the intention and the tenderness with which you express it with your hands which is why my family laughs at me now because I'm expressing more openly who I am with my hands in videos that it helps to comprehend in your mind where the person is coming from in their heart because we all miscommunicate now I've always said give me three days and I'll convince you of anything <laughs> And there was a Jewish person from New York one time that sat down with me for three days and we talked about stuff. It was wonderful. And praise the Lord, you know, it was enjoyable. But it's not about changing someone's mind. It's about communicating so they can understand where you're coming from and then make their own determination of who you are within their perspective. And on some levels, it's good to allow other people's perspective to sharpen you but sometimes they mistake you and so you have to trust in the Lord to reveal who you are in him and the fact that he too was misunderstood and sometimes they didn't get it until after he died and rose again sometimes that might happen with you until you're gone they may never know who you really are the sacrament of the saint let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing. One thing that should be added about whenever the Bible says keeping of their souls, it means also the keeping of their emotions. The soul is the seed of the emotions. So, if you could remember that soul and emotions go hand in hand, then you might understand a little deeper what the meaning of the words are in scripture. To choose to suffer means there is something wrong. To choose God's will, even if it means suffering, is a very different thing. No healthy saint ever chooses suffering. He chooses God's will, as Jesus did, whether it means suffering or not. No saint dare interfere with the discipline of suffering in another saint. That is causing a precious fruit to bear its time of harvest in that soul. The saint who satisfies the heart of Jesus will make other saints strong and mature for God. I smile at that because I think if they want it, because <laughs> Jesus often said, if wisdom is justified of her children, he used also the expression, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And always gave the if you do. The people who do us good are never those who sympathize with us. They always hinder. Because they, because sympathy innervates. No one understands a saint but the saint who is nearest to the Savior. If we accept the sympathy of a saint, the reflex feeling is, well, God is dealing hardly with me. That is why Jesus said, self-pity was of the devil. Matthew 16, 23. Be merciful to God's reputation. It is easy to blacken God's character because God never answers back. He never vindicates himself. Beware of the thought that Jesus needed sympathy in his earthly life. He refused sympathy from man because he knew far too wisely that no one on earth understood what he was after. He took sympathy from his father only and from the angels in heaven, Luke 15.10. Notice God's unutterable waste of saints, according to the judgment of the world. God plants his saints in the most useless places. We say, God intends me to be here because I am so useful. God never estimated his life along the line of greater use. God put his saints where they will glorify him, and we are no judges at all of where that is. Often on the internet, as working in the ministry, sharing Jesus, it's not so much the constant acceptance of what you're saying to someone that is most important, but at the moment that they're venting, at the moment that they're angry, at the moment that they're mad, you might be the one that they needed God placed there for this purpose. They needed to vent so they don't take an action that they'll regret later. So sometimes God may use you just to be the pressure relief valve that you could defend yourself, although there is never a defense for a Christian. You could 
affirm yourself, although there's never an affirmation except for God's approval on your life, which he's already given because he said he loves you. Or you could just accept the circumstances that revealing Jesus is enough to let him, by his Holy Spirit, do the rest. The hardest thing sometimes is to suffer in silence. And for me, it really is. When often you're misunderstood, rejected, or vented on. And to let God be God in the life of the person who may be using you to be a scapegoat when there's nothing wrong with you at all. So don't react, but act upon what God tells you to do and where God puts you to be so that you can just be you the way you are as God works in you to accomplish each day changes so that you'll be ready for the day by reading your devotional and applying it to your life so that the emotions don't get carried away and you're not a soulful Christian but a spiritual one instead.